Hey, it's Thursday night live. How is everyone? We're so glad that you've tuned in. And it's funny, you know, I very rarely post on Facebook, but I we've been doing this weekly since the pandemic started about just, hey, if we can't get out and gather, maybe we can go and share with people even in their homes. And so we're just so blessed for a lot of you that have been with us during this journey. We've started last week, if you weren't tuned in last week, about pandemic to purpose and how purpose is, is just foundational and pivotal to everything we do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we live without purpose or we live kind of just not really knowing where we're going or why, it kind of the meaning of life takes, takes kind of a tank. And, you know, we all look to have significance. And so this message tonight just picks up from last week about pandemic to purpose. And I don't know about you, but... Um, I just, I'm having a really close friend of mine. Um, she's passing from this life to the next. And uh, we've talked a lot about it. She's had chronic illness for a while. And um, it's still not an easy task. And I can't help but just try to tell myself that um, purposes get even smaller when you only have a small time. Mm -hmm. That sometimes just sitting near them or letting them hear your voice or breathing in the same room together, there's great purpose in that. So I just want to encourage some of you out there that are just thinking, you know, I don't know if my life has any significance. I don't know what I do if it really matters. And I want to say to you, any little thing you do with great love really, really matters. Mm -hmm. And I think purpose can be found in the littlest of details. So I just want to thank you and encourage you that you matter, that what you're doing does mean something, that sometimes we can't see all the fruits of our labors on this side of heaven, or sometimes we have to invest for a long time before we see uh, some progress from it, but to not lose heart. Don't lose heart. So here we are now at the beginning of stages, right, of coming out of this world pandemic. So the question is, what good has come from all this? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. we talked about it last week. What's the answer, Pastor? Well, you know, people are starting to reassess priorities. Right, right. And I, and I think that's one of the one of the things that we need to really recognize is that, you know, we're, we're seeing, um, you know, that life is not going in the direction we were hoping it would go. And mm -hmm. so because of that, you know, we're having to reassess and look mm -hmm. at, okay, what do I want to do? Where do I want to go? Mm -hmm. And so, um, and so one of the things that we were looking at is, uh, you know, in Ecclesiastes, uh, Solomon, he was, uh, he was just kind of like looking at what his life was, you know, being a king, being rich. Right, right. And, and he didn't know, you know, what his purpose really was. And so at the end he says, you know, um, I looked at everything and I worked so hard to accomplish, but it was also meaningless. It was like chasing the wind. There was nothing really worthwhile anywhere. Mm -hmm. And and so um, it's not working. Uh -oh. So so with this in mind, we we began our series on the pursuit of purpose. And so um, so the purpose is the key to life. You know, knowing why, right? Mm -hmm. it, it helps answer why. And and the quality of life decreases when a generation loses its sense of destiny and purpose and so back in the true. 60s mm -hmm. it's like society had a purpose at that time all the society were in america they were looking at what needed to be changed there were some things that were mm -hmm. unjust and so they changed it and so back they in changed si some of it some of it in 1964 they had the civil rights act mm -hmm. 1965 they had the voting rights act and then 1968 they had the fair housing act and so, so there was a, a movement that was going mm -hmm. on in America that really caused us to move forward and look at, you know, what life was about. And so, um, you know, it reminds me of a scripture in Proverbs. This is where there's no vision, the people cast mm. off restraint. And that word so vision true. is a, a divine vision, a divine purpose that God gives to all of us as people. And so if there's no restraint, then we're going to do whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's, we're starting to find that around a lot of cities in our in our country where so it's kind of like what our society needs is like a common cause mm -hmm. we need to mm -hmm. come together it's interesting you know here on this island we have brought some of our the fellowships together to do service together on sunday in the park and it's kind of like let's come together let's build synergy to reach all the more people so it's like if we as a nation or we as a people we as a community can rally behind mm -hmm. us a common cause um, that brings a great vision. It brings, it brings great energy, great purpose. That's right. That's right. And so, so as we start to plan out our lives and, and ask the question, what, why am I here? What am I doing? Um, you know, we start to recognize that we are, we make goals and they're kind of like climbing a ladder. Mm -hmm. And, and so a lot of times, you know, we, um, we start to climb this ladder and we find out that the, that the ladder was on the wrong wall because we were looking at being successful. 
if that means you know having the big house having the money having the car having this or that mm -hmm. um, or being famous you know all these mm -hmm. different things then you start to realize that that's really not the wall that you want to be climbing for um, you really want to go for something that's called significance you want to be significant or do something that's of significance right you want to know that what you do matters exactly. and that it has more eternal value than just something that's going to only be for a short time that's right and so and so how do we find that you know well we find that in our creator you know because a creator any creator of anything has a purpose for everything so like whoever designed this little thing here there was a purpose that they had for creating this and so they designed it with something in mind and so I can't use this as a hammer because it's not made to be a hammer I can't use it to read uh, as a Kindle because it's not designed for that right it's designed for a specific thing and so everything is designed that way so the question is you know um, what do we do what do we do with this and how do we guide ourselves and it's kind of like having a rudder you know, it's like when you find where you're supposed to go and you're on a boat, then your rudder helps you set the course, right? Yeah. And, and so I think those are the things that are super important. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so everything in life has a purpose, everything. We were born with a purpose. And so, um, so once we discover this purpose, then we know that there's uh, a meaning to our existence. And then we talked a little bit about Esther and Joseph. Right. Yeah, last week we did. Yeah. We did, and uh, and how they found their purpose. They so recognized. I think, I think we just have to ask the question. So why am I here? Mm -hmm. And we should apply with to be myself fully. Absolutely. God wants you to be who He created you to be. Mm -hmm. And I feel like sometimes I love that song by Lauren Dingle. You know, it says, "You say, you say I am strong when I am weak. You say I am loved." I love that song because mm -hmm. it's like we hear all these things in our head that tell us lies and mm -hmm. try to take away our significance and our purpose. But God created us for a great work. That's and right. like I said, it's not that you have to have a lot of recognition or, you know, write books and um, change, uh, I don't know, change the community that you live in you don't realize sometimes it just takes one life mm -hmm. it just makes a difference in just one person's life can snowball and eventually change a community and I think That's it's right. important that you don't give up that who you are is exactly who God made you he gave you all your unique giftings and qualities for mm -hmm. a specific reason and that's, that's exciting right. that's, that's right. exciting to be who you are that's I right love it that's right and so that you know the key is that uh, plans do change as we've recognized sure, that over, over sure. the last year and a half, uh, but purpose is constant. And mm -hmm. so whatever God had in mind for you, that didn't change. That that remains. And so it's true, again, because some of you had to kind of take a detour mm -hmm. or thought, hey, I was thought I was going in this way. That job fell through. We were going to move to this area. We're going to do this family vacation, and all that stuff got taken from you. That's right. And you recognize that you know in the midst of all the changes. Um, there are some things that don't change, and the things that don't change is that you have incredible abilities and gifts, mm -hmm. and a personality that's very unique, mm -hmm. and those are yours Lord before it, even Lord birth, right? Mm -hmm. And Psalms 139, it says, you form my innermost being, mm -hmm. you I shaped my delicate inside mm -hmm. and my intricate outside, and you wove them all together in my mother's womb. Mm -hmm. It says, I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think mm. about it. How thoroughly you know me, Lord. I love that part. Mm -hmm. You even formed every bone in my body when you created me in the secret place. Carefully, skillfully, you shaped me from nothing to something. Mm. You saw who you created in me before I even became me. That's good. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. Before I had ever seen the light of day, the number of days you planned for me were already recorded in yeah, your book. Yeah, that kind of knowledge is just too, it's too wonderful. It's mm -hmm. kind of, almost we don't, we can't comprehend it. We just got to read it and trust it. Yeah. Um, because you've been designed, you're perfect for the purposes that he has for you. Yeah. And everything you naturally have and are necessary for you to fulfill it. Yes. So we're pretty clear on that. But it's important that you never try to be like someone else. I really, I want to encourage you. Comparison is the greatest enemy to success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is the greatest enemy for security. If we, you know, we compare ourselves and we become prideful, if we think we're better, if we compare ourselves and we feel inferior, either way, it moves us to the flesh, it moves us to our eyes off the Lord to say, God, I want to be the best me mm -hmm. because you made me unique. Our voice is unique. 
our talents, our DNA, everything about us is unique. No one else can be us. That's so I right. always would say, you know, to parents that had kids, it's like nobody else is going to be their mom, just mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. So if you don't rise up to be that mom, nobody else come, you know, people can try to come in and you have different people that try, but you were created to be the mom. That's and right. so, you know, be, be who you are. That's right. That's right. You know, I just had a <coughs> interesting conversation with someone today. Um, we were talking about the, the things we hear. Um, uh, parent, it could be parents, it could be friends, it could be family members, and they'll say, you are like this, or you're mm -hmm. like this, you're like that, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they will, we start to hear those voices all the time, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so we start to beat ourselves up because we're assuming that they're right. Mm -hmm. And I said, I said, well, you know, who created you? And, and it's like, that's the one that you need mm -hmm. to go to to find out. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, your mom carried you, um, and your father was a part of that, but, but they're not the one that created you. God created you in your mother's womb. Um, and so ask him mm -hmm. who you are. Ask him what he's called you to be. You know, exactly. It's like, you know, some of you have come back from some things you wish you hadn't. You have mm -hmm. some shame. Maybe there was years of addiction or years of living for the wrong purposes. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, by taking away sometimes the things that, we're destroying you. That's right. It, it, it's the Lord allows it to help you to discover the things you were really created for. Right. Because even sometimes in those times where you weren't living the way you should, God was still maturing and raising up something that He could use. Because whatever the enemy means for evil, God can always turn around for good. There's that verse that says, "You know, that He who began a good work in you will complete it." Mm -hmm. And so we have to trust in that. That's right. So we can't ever give up, even if it feels like we're hitting failure. Mm -hmm. No, you're not. God may be saying, wait, but he never wants you to stop That's right. moving forward in the direction that he's opened the door for. That's right. And, you know, it says uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, it says, we, we are God's masterpiece. Mm. Right? So he's the artist. And, um, and so he has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned mm. for us long See. ago. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so one of the things about, like Moses, Moses, he instinctively... Uh, tried to deliver or help one of his countrymen mm -hmm. uh, because he was being abused by an Egyptian um, Taskmaster. Uh, leader. Mm -hmm. and, and so he kills him and he hides him in the sand. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it's found out. So he has to leave now. He leaves for right. years. Right. And he's living on the desert. He's a shepherd now. Uh, and, then he, and then God speaks to him and he says, I want you to go back to Egypt mm -hmm. because I want you to release all my people. And so sometimes... You know, we go ahead of what God has in mind mm -hmm. for us, you know, and that's what Moses did. But God, you know, in his goodness, it's like, I'm still going to use you. Right. And, and I have a purpose for you. And that's what happened. Uh, we see this. You go through scriptures and you find people one after another that mm -hmm. had a different journey that they were on. Mm -hmm. And then God kind of wakes them up and says, oh, no, no, no. I have something amazing for you to do mm -hmm. or to be. I know. Uh, I think of Paul, right? Yeah, like he yeah. was so zealous to be who he was. And then God knocks him off a horse, That's blinds right. him, and shows him the real light and says, this is who you're fighting against. That's right. That's and right. so, you know, remember the apostles threw um, lots to figure out who was going to be the missing disciple after um, Judas took his own life after betraying his Savior. And God had someone in mind. And, you know, Peter, he, his job was to serve the Jew, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And right. Paul's job was to serve the Gentile. the Gentile. Right. So God had specific purposes and he mm -hmm. used their in unique giftings to do mm -hmm. those things. That's right. That's right. And so, you know, even though both of them had a, a general, generally the same thing to do, which was to proclaim the gospel, but each one had a target, a place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like us. My wife and I are here on Catalina Island because this is where God has called us, mm -hmm. you know? And so we've been here for, I have been here for longer than I've been anywhere else in my life, right? Glory. And, and, and I never thought that that would ever happen. I thought, mm -hmm. you know, I would be in San Diego and spend a lot of my life there. And so, yeah, but God had a different purpose. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's a beautiful thing when he starts to unpack that. Yes. I didn't understand it for years, for a long time. Yes, but, we know. Uh, yes. And as I started to con continue to grow and understand the heart of God, all of a sudden I started to see this island with his eyes. Mm -hmm. And once I started to see the island with his eyes, then I realized I'm home. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be here, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and so that's a beautiful thing, you know, to, <coughs> to get that. And so, so we have to recognize that purposes are often multiple. Like Moses, he he played different roles. He was mm -hmm. a spokesman for God. He was a warrior of God. He was a priest, 
and he used a servant and a lawgiver. So he did all these things. And you can have multiple things that God may have you do. Uh, and that's uh, all good. And yet at the same time, you need to recognize that our purposes are interdependent. And what that means is that I depend on my wife and her skill sets and her gifts and abilities to be able to sync with mine so that we can serve together here on this island. Her and I serve together. It's not just me and it's not just her, but we do this together. And that, mm-hmm. what that does is that it, it takes our, our ministry potential to a greater level because we're working together. Right, in Ephesians 4.16 it says that, right? It yep. says each one makes the whole body fit together perfectly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Each part does its own special work and helps the other parts grow so the whole body's healthy That's right. and growing and full of love. So, That's right. So purposes cannot be fulfilled um, in, in isolation. In isolation, absolutely. That's right. We have to do it. There's a lot of interdependence that Mm -hmm. you're going to have in your life, so don't be afraid of that. That's right. We're not saying dependence; we're saying interdependence. Interdependent. That's right. And so, so the thing is that that's a that's a a place of growth and maturity. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we grow in dependence, right? We need someone to help us, and then we become independent, and that's when we start to kind of go our own ways. Mm -hmm. Um, But the next step of maturity is to be interdependent where we recognize the value of being together, the value of working alongside each other. I know, I always used to say, I think I'm one of the nerve cells in the body. You know how, because there's all bodies, I'm the one that gets, ah, I get all <laughs> intense, get loud, I get emotional. And um, you know, in Romans, when it talks about our body has many parts, and they're all very important. We have many parts, but mm-hmm. they're very important, and we all belong to each other. That's right. So we must never forget this. Yes, sir. Because you know, permit, purpose, is permanent that's right so what god wants will be established it will be that's established. really exciting uh but how he gets there might vary it's just kind of like sailing a boat sailing a ship you know going from here to the mainland i mean the goal is to go to the mainland but you're going to recognize that according to the winds and according to the water and the way it's right. going mm-hmm. you're going to be doing this the whole way out there Mm-hmm. And, and so that's kind of like how life is, you know, we're going to have to adjust our sails. So we're going to have to, but you hold on to the rudder because you know the rudder ultimately is going to get you there. That's the thing you know, I'm supposed to go there. And so the key is to recognize that God's purposes are permanent. How we get there might vary, right? Uh, in Job 42, he says, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. In other words, nothing can stop what God's heart is for, right? Mm-hmm. So ultimately, it get, He'll get us right, there, right? right? And so, so purpose is also resilient. That's right. Yeah, that's right. If you have made, it's 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 going to it's going to happen. There's going to be things that are going to detour you. There's going to be things that discourage you. There's going to be things that come against you. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's important, you know, to use those experiences that maybe seem like they're challenges but to just re redefine you that's right and to refine your your purpose that's right and to assure you that this is really what you want and this is the direction you're supposed to go many times god will make those mistakes and he'll turn them into miracles where all of a sudden our mistakes um, you mean yeah. our mistakes mm-hmm. uh he'll turn them into like little miracles yeah. that you can be you can use those things to help other people or or you know just different insights that you may gain from that uh disappointments things that have disappointed you he turns them into testimony you know, he, he turns them into a story that you have to share to encourage other people. And so, you know, Paul, you know, the apostle, he had, he had great talent, but he wasn't doing what he was created to do. Um, you know, he was uh, great at organizing. He's the one that put together the persecution against the church, right? Mm-hmm. So he, was, he had all these letters put together. He was going after the church. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was a leader. You know, he was there when Stephen was stoned mm-hmm. uh, by, with rocks. And, um, and then he was a communicator. He was t- you know, telling people, this is what we need to do and what have you. But then all of a sudden, God, like she said, God got a hold of him, right. knocks him off his horse and says, right. look, you're going in the wrong direction. I value all the passion you have. I value all these different things, but you're going in the wrong direction. You're fighting against me. And so that's when he realized, whoa, wait a minute. So he used that same passion, that same heart that he had, and he continued now to go in the direction that God had called him to, right? And so that's why he says in Corinthians 15, for I am the least of all the apostles. Mm -hmm. In fact, I am not even worthy to be called an apostle after the way I persecuted God's church. And so, like, he in his humble state was like, man, I don't even deserve to be called an apostle, man. The way I went after the church, I was d- trying to destroy mm-hmm. this church, right? But our purposes cannot be hindered That's by right. our past. That's right. They cannot. Do not let your past hinder you. That's right. Uh, it, God will use it. I don't care how bad it is. That's God right. uses murderers. He uses blasphemers. He can use anybody who's now saying, I want to live for you. That's I want right. to rotor in 
my energy and I want to get my sails and lined up with how you move, Lord. That's right. And I think it's important. Yeah. I think, you know, Abraham was a liar, Moses was a murderer. I mean, you can go on and on. John was, right. Jacob was a conniver. Gideon was so fearful. Rahab was a prostitute. David was an adulterer and a murderer. Elijah seemed suicidal. I mean, it just goes on and on. Yes, that's There's, right. You can see everywhere in the Bible how God does not use the perfect, the top of the class. He does not the, always use the type A or the one or the that elite. got the yep. scholarship or went to the Ivy League school. Right. Um, he just that's uses right. people that are have his attention. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, that, that he's they're allowing God to grab their attention. That's and right. they're making him a priority. Yeah, it's, not, it's not the ability, it's the availability. Yeah, I like that. You know, if you avail yourself, if you open your heart and say, God you know better than me than anyone here on this planet of what it would be my maximum uh you know fulfillment maximum purpose here on this on this earth show me and guess what he will he will start to unpack things and so you know purpose is universal the whole world is trying to figure what am i supposed to do who am i why am i here everything has a purpose it all exists to fulfill god's purpose yeah i like it in roman 8 this is the message where it says we are confident that god is able to orchestrate everything to work out towards something good and beautiful when we love him and we, and we talked about that earlier right. except his yep. invitation to live from the distant past as eternal love reaches into the future this is really good he calls them you know he chooses them beforehand to be conformed mm -hmm. to the image of his son mm -hmm so that we can be the firstborn of his family. That's and right. as for those he chose before, he called them to a different destiny so That's they right. could experience what it means to be made right with God and share in his glory. That's right. So no matter how your life started, yep, we're talking to you. Mm -hmm. No matter how hard, mm -hmm. no matter no where, where you came from or how bad it's been, you are not a mistake. God right. intended for you to live both physically and spiritually. spiritually. He would not have allowed you to be born if he didn't have a great purpose. That's right. You are necessary. And, and you are essential. You know, people right now with the pandemic, they talk about the essential workers. Mm. Everyone is essential yes. in the kingdom. Yes. Everyone is needed. Everyone is necessary, mm. right? I remember Je Jeremiah 4 or 5. Oh, there's a lot more. Um, this is that song. Don't you know that I formed you before you were born? I knew you. Can't you see that my plans for you are good? That's right. That's, That's right. Before I knew you, I love that. In yeah. And, so and we, you leave us, this leaves, this message leaves us with some questions. Though. That's right. That's right. And so, so one of the questions is, have you discovered your qualities and characteristics that you were born with? You know, that's, that's something that I think is important. You know, as, we, as we get older, actually, we start to really refine it, hopefully. Yeah, sometimes I don't think we really, how well do you really know yourselves? Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have to listen in your head because some of those tapes aren't coming from the Lord. That's right. And so it's made you not realize who you really are. Yeah. And are you making yourself available to Him? That's right. So that you can be used for His purposes. Yeah. Or are, are you limiting yourself? From pursuing your God-given abilities, you know, and 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 uh, gifts that He's given you, are are you doing this? Are you? Is it because of your past or even your present? Mm. You know, because don't let your past nor your present keep you from your tomorrow, because God is in the tomorrow. He's waiting mm. for us to step in, to walk in, and say, God, I'm availing myself. Here you are, and here I am. Let's do this, right? And don't forget to look who's around you mm -hmm. and who complements the gifts. That's and right. the abilities God that has given you. That's right. So there's a lot we gave you to think about tonight. And yeah. I hope it encouraged you because I know there's a great purpose being lived out in your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At wherever you're at, even right now. So I hope this message encourages you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my our hope is that that uh, you will make that, that big decision and just avail yourself to God. Amen. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, just say, God, I'm available. You know, I have some abilities. But, I, but I'm going to mm -hmm. give you my availability. I'm going yeah. to give that to you. And when you do that, uh, look to see what happens. It's just an amazing mm -hmm. journey that God yeah. takes you on. I love it. Right? It was great to share it tonight with you. I'm going to leave it that. I'm going to close with that song, song from you. Yeah. Don't you know that I formed you before you were born? I knew you. Can't you see that my plans for you are good? When it's not just.